Welcome back to the show. There's so much to go over. We're going to talk about the SEC appeal against the Ripple case. Uh, is it does dismiss dropped or still moving forward? We said we got the answer. <laughs> We've been looking for it. I'll tell you what else we got too. Tether has a bullseye on its back. Don't believe me. Maybe you'll believe Brad Garlinghouse. Somebody wrote that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and digperspectives.com for exclusive content. Right now, $2.41 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is off 2.1%. 67,200 plus for Bitcoin. Right now, it's up 10.3 on the seven day. 2,600 plus for Ethereum. It's up nine and a half on the seven day. Tether market cap, 119 billion plus. USDC, 34 billion plus. XD, uh, XRP is number seven spot, 55 cents. This morning, we're up 1.3 on the 24, 2.4 on the seven day. That is not uncommon to see these two out front leading the pack. That's what we normally see head on a swivel. We're ranging between 54 and 56 cents, sitting at 55 cents in the middle. We'll keep an eye on it. We got some news. Let's get into it. First of all, the European Central Bank says they have cut the interest rate by quarter percent. A quarter percent. Now, we just saw the Federal Reserve cut a half a percent here at home. And I say now it's the Fed's turn again in November. Remember, there was a talk that we could see the rate cut two or three more times before the end of the year. And that was, uh, I can't remember if that was BlackRock or Van Eck. Somebody like that said that. And we covered it here on the channel. I think it was in the last week or so. So... This gets very interesting, and I think it speaks to the larger problem here. The problem is systemic. Everyone is trapped between the rate that they're at, not being able to raise it because of what it will do to harm the economy, whether it's in their own region or across the globe. We're all stuck. Everyone's stuck. And that's why there's tokenization happening around the world. And don't forget about the introduction of new money. That's the other part of this equation. You have to introduce new assets and new money because the money we're currently using is not holding up. Take a listen to this. Larry Fink talks about how money is not Bitcoin and basically no one's currency is connected to it. Take a listen. It, it, it's digitizing gold in many yeah. ways. It's a, it's a, instead of investing in gold as a hedge against inflation, a hedge against the, uh, the onerous problems of any one country or, mm -hmm. or, the, or the devaluation of your currency, whatever country you're in. Uh, well, why are we talking about devaluation of our currency? Is it because Larry realizes how stuck everyone is? All the central banks are stuck. The Fed is stuck. The European Central Bank is stuck. Japan is stuck. Germany, everyone is in this boat. And isn't that why we're hearing so much about Bitcoin now? That it's the flight to quality is what Larry Fink called it. <laughs> Let's turn now to the confusion over the Form C filing for the appeal by the SEC, which was supposed to reveal exactly what they're going to be appealing in the Ripple case. Well, we had confusion on when the deadline would be. Eleanor Terrett, 29 minutes ago, says she's heard back from the SEC this morning. And according to a spokesperson, the appeal is proceeding normally and the documents will be filed publicly soon. So that's where that's at. Now, coming back to James Murphy, he said the SEC apparently is saying they are proceeding with the Ripple appeal. Well... This is where she says she heard back and the spokesman said they're moving forward. Brad Garlinghouse comes in underneath. Proceeding normally for an agency that makes up their own rules as they go. Well said. Well said. So that's what we have in the latest. Shout out to Eleanor for that. Navigating cross-border payments with CFOs, treasurers in mind. Now, why did I just switch gears to this? 
because the fight, the legal fight, is also a vet, a vet, and vet it, and excuse me, I can't talk this morning. An audit and vetting process. That wasn't so hard to say. That's what I believe. And because there's going to be such a disruption in the best way inside the financial system, whether we're talking about cross-border payments or the settlement of derivatives, we're talking about a massive disruption. It must be legally defined and vetted to the highest order. That's why we may end up going to the Supreme Court. But what's interesting about this particular article is they're talking to the gentleman who is the managing director of FIG Transaction FX Product in APAC region, Global Payment Solution at, you guessed it, Bank of America. And what are they talking about? Cross-border solutions. Oh, yes, that's what they're talking about. Guaranteed foreign exchange rates and multi-currency netting. In a world where cross-border payments are 24-7, we know this, we know this, right? <laughs> okay. So it's Bank of America working on interoperability and standardization with ISO 20022, by the way. Okay? So we know it's all tied together no matter how much they all try to tell us it wasn't. So I remind you of the patent that Bank of America has with Ripple in it. I also don't mind uh, celebrating Michael McDaniel, who was the guy that broke this patent in my Telegram group years ago. And then that led directly to this. Brad Garlinghouse had to go on and answer to it. America, there have been reports that uh, Bank of America has taken out a patent that suggests it's using the Ripple led ledger for its currency transactions. Can you comment on that? I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Can you confirm or kill the speculation? I can neither confirm nor kill. <laughs> Like we are, I think, widely known to be working with a lot of banks around the world, and certainly some of the largest banks already are in the world are customers of ours today, uh, and we'll continue to work with big banks around the world. And uh, I, I too was surprised by uh, that patent application because we're, we're, we have not announced anything. All right. Well, I had to try. Yeah. And ask. Enough. Thank you. There you go. That's the power of the people right there. Brad had to go answer to that one. Sorry about that, Brad. But then uh, we know we just finished 2024 swell. Well, let's go back to 2023 swell where Nick Burefato talked with Brad Garlinghouse. And this is what he said. And excuse the volume. It's a lot of people in the background. But this is from swell 2023 face to face and Brad was so confident he's got an air of confidence about him that's unbelievable I met Brad first in 2019 back in Singapore and he's even more confident today than he was back then he made it clear that they're ready to settle with the SEC as long as they can get clarity on XRP I asked him if American companies were waiting on the sidelines to jump in the game once clarity happens and he said absolutely and he specifically said Bank of America. Bank of America is a huge partner of Ripple. And he said Bank of America, um, Bank of America stands to gain really big when the settlement happens because they're going to have a huge competitive advantage over their competitors by using ODL in the marketplace. So Brad is very, very bullish. When asked what, what, you know, what motivates Brad every day, Brad just said, I want to put a dent in the universe. We've heard that from Naveen Gipta, and, and Brad has the same philosophy. So that was fantastic. That was my one-on-one -on -one with Brad. There you have it, ladies and I'm gentlemen. And that's where we're at there. So when I think about that article about navigating cross-border payments, I'm thinking about Ripple's role involved in helping get it done. Now let's take a look at this. The World Economic Forum, I'm not a fan. I know you're not either, but you know what? It doesn't stop the fact that this is where a lot of the world is doing business. So in turn, the steering committee has decided to have Brad Garlinghouse on it, as well as Danelle Dixon. Yeah, that's what's going on. Lauren Believe from the head of public policy and government at Ripple is going to be on the working group and reviewers, right? And then we're seeing this. This is India. You want to get a size and scope about the size of India and the business that they can do? India's digital revolution has spread to the remotest corners of our nation. Over 530 million unbanked Indians have been brought into the financial system through Jandhan accounts. 
To put things into perspective, 530 million is more than the combined population of the US, UK, France, and Canada. What is even more heartening is that over 300 million of these account holders are women. I feel both proud and humbled that GEO has played a significant part in this remarkable transformation. India's digital no doubt about it. Let me stop that the for us here. Corners of our now I'm showing you this because we know Bank of America is working towards all that cross-border payments and interoperability. The Federal Bank of Indi India years ago released a paper mentioning Ripple all through the paper, right? Yes, they did. That was years ago, but we're showing you that because of what's happening today. I also want to remind you, Indislim Bank. Ripple partnered with Indislim Bank to streamline cross-border payments, making significant entry into the India market, aiming to provide instant access in emerging markets like India, Brazil, and China. Yes, bank. This bank has joined Digital Rupee CBDC project, has been collaborating with Ripple since 2018 for cross-border remittances. Yes, bank integration with the unified payment interface by leveraging Ripple's technology as a part of this collaboration. And then the Federal Bank of India, which I just read you that letter where they talked about Ripple and its technology there. And then Kotak Mahindra Bank. So then you have Ripple's partnership. Bank was aimed at improvising access and banking services throughout RippleNet, uh, allowing quicker and cheaper cross-border transactions. And then Neom, while not a bank, a global payments platform, received approval from RBI and utilizes Ripple's technology for its payment solutions. You could probably throw access in there too, right? But here's what I want to say to this. Going back to Yes Bank. Now, I was fortunate enough uh, and honored enough to be able to uh, participate and, and go to, not participate, but uh, go uh, to Swell in 2019. It was at that event, I talked to the gentleman who was a rep there from Yes Bank in India. And I said, you'll have to forgive me. We were eating lunch. I said, but you have to forgive me. I've flown awful long way around the world. And I have to ask this. I can't come all the way around here and not ask the obvious question. And he said, well, what is it? I said, will you be using XRP at some point? And he said he actually dropped his fork on his plate and just started giggling. And he looked at me and he says, of course, my friend. Why do you think we're here? The food? And we just erupted in laughter. And I was happy to be the joke and the laughing, you know, the, the punchline. Um, I'm not going that far around the world and not ask the basic question. I could tell you that. And it was refreshing to hear. And look, look at all the things we've been seeing since then. And let's take a look at this from Egg Crypto right now. XRP Channel B. Major resistance levels, 64 cents, 85 cents at $1.10. We want to break through those so bad. Major support targets are at 48, 38, and 28 cents. Major cycle targets, 750, $13, and $27. Channel B, which is right here in this illustration, and here is our support. But channel B is the resistance we need to break through. And he's saying here, it is the gatekeeper for XRP's monthly chart blocking a full body close inside since 2017-21 and even the big July 23 pump. The clock is ticking and the price is getting squeezed within channel B. A monthly close inside would be a first and could unlock the path to much higher prices. What do you think about that? That's what we're looking at. So we want to get above, and I start looking at the highest one in this channel and say, okay, let's well get above $1.11 and see that become support for XRP. And then I think we can start talking about these cycles, these major cycle targets of $7.50, $13, $27. And I think it involves legislation, obviously, right? But this is super, super exciting to me. One more thing before we leave. Brad Garlinghouse sits down to talk with Tony from Thinking Crypto, and this is what he had to say about USD Tether and the real USD. This is not the first time that Brad has brought up Tether being investigated or something not being correct about Tether. Just listen. I doubt Tether will. Tether may continue to grow, mm. but I doubt it will have the same market share 
right. in two years, let's say. So I think there's an opportunity, and I think bringing more liquidity on chain, bringing mm -hmm. more liquidity on the XRPL uh, is good for everybody on, sure. in the XRP ecosystem. So there's talk of stablecoin legislation around the corner in the United States. Do you think it's going to have a similar shakeup like it did, well, the E regulations did, where Tether may lose some share here and that will be beneficial for RLUSD? Yeah, I mean, look, I think it'll be beneficial for all stablecoins that are compliance first, that take a, a regulatory first, a front foot towards regulation. Uh, I don't think it, it, RLUSD would be one example of that that I think will do well but not the only one. Mm. So I, I do think we will get legislation, uh, hard to know exactly when, but uh, hopefully sometime the next year, even the election, you know, it's hard to make predictions around that. Sure. It sure is, no doubt about it. But you know what? Then I come back to this and I think the launch of the real USD actually getting legislation where there's no more talking about it, we have it. How difficult does Channel B look now? Not financial advice from me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspectives. I'll catch all of you on the next one.